Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at FinRL. This will be a series of videos. Um, today we'll just be doing the data wrangling portion of the, the pipeline, so to speak. Um, just for everyone who isn't familiar, FinRL is a similar reinforcement learning package. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've been using things like stable baselines and open AI, Jim Any Trading type packages to perform those um, projects. But there's an all in one encompassing package called FinRL, and they have a ton of resources to learn. So I highly recommend, if you're interested, to go on over to their um, GitHub and just go through some of the different uh, projects. That's what I'll be doing today. I'll be just doing the data wrangling portion of one of their tutorials. Um, I try not to just take direct copies, but um, today, since I didn't find too many videos of it and I wanna make sure I get videos out to you guys each week, we'll be pretty much looking at their code for one of their beginning um, you know, tutorials. We'll just be looking at the data wrangling because the notebooks are do get quite long and um, I want to just make sure that we're not spending too much time. But this will probably be like three videos. The first one will be wrangling. The second one will be um, actually training and fitting the model. And then the third one will be testing and seeing if we perform any better than, say, you know, a mean variance optimized portfolio um, or something else. <clears throat> now, the cool thing about FinRL is that big difference here is that we can trade a basket of different stocks, not just one stock. So if you've seen my other videos, they pretty much I've just been training the agent to trade Apple. But in this instance, we can train the agent to really um, buy and sell a whole different basket of different uh, stocks. And it will take a while for this to load. So just bear with me while we uh, get that ready. Okay, we're done here. As you can see, it took about three minutes and 30 seconds to do that. Um, so it just takes a little while to install everything. But once you do, I think that's the longest bit of, of cell computing power that you'll, you'll need to wait through. Um, we will download some usual suspects like NumPy, Pandas, and DateTime. But for the most part, what we'll be looking at FinRL's Yahoo downloader, which is really cool. It's preprocessors like the feature engineer and the data split as well as the configurations for the uh, tickers and indicators. Um, this makes uh, processing your data a whole lot easier than say importing Y Finance, downloading it, and then merging a bunch of tables together with another package that has the indicators and et cetera, et cetera. FinRL just has that all together in, in these packages here, which makes it really easy. So, um, in their notebooks, if you go through, you'll see that you can define your train dates and your um, and your actual uh, trading dates. So the train, and we have it marketed as trade, but this would be like a test or validation here. We create a bunch of uh, our portfolio, basically. So I chose Apple, Microsoft, Meta, IBM, Home Depot, Caterpillar, Amazon, Intel. Uh, AT&T, Visa, and Goldman Sachs. And then what's what I really like about FinRL is this Yahoo downloader. You just plug in your start dates, your end dates, your portfolio, and then call fetch data, and it'll put everything in this variable here. Doesn't seem to work because I did not. <laughs> Apologies, I did not even import any of the 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 code that we need the packages that we need and we also need to define our dates and now we can fetch the data it goes through each symbol and it fetches the data and it puts it in this uh, data frame here if we take a look at it this is what it looks like and we have the dates the open the high low close volume 
the symbol and the day. The day is Monday through Friday. Um, so this looks like it's a Thursday. But we can add many different variables to this data frame here by calling our feature engineer and storing that in a variable called FE. Basically, we're calling the indicators. Uh, we're getting the VIX and the turbulence. And we're going to then create a variable called process where we process our data frame and we include these indicators here that we're, that we're calling on the feature engineer. Great. So it's successfully added VIX and the turbulence index as well as our other indicators. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at what that looks like. And you can see we have a big old data frame here of 28,000 rows with 18 columns. And it looks like after the day, we get the MACD, we get Bollinger Bands, we get RSI, CCI, whoops. Get the DX30, close 30 SMA, close 60 SMA, and the VIX and the turbulence. So we do get some indicators here um, that, that will help our predictive power. So very nice. But um, we do need to do some further processing. Um, I don't want to go too far into this code, but basically we're iterating through the dates and the symbols, and we're merging the process with the combination of the, the list, date, and uh, ranges here. Um, and we're just trying to sort our data frame on date and the actual symbol. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you what it looks like when we do that. So there we go. So we've, this is our new data frame. It's on the same day with our tick um, data here. We still have all the high, low, closed volume, as well as all of our other indicators here with the fixed and turbulence. So, all right. So we're almost done. At this point, we can split our data and we can use the handy date split. Um, and we just pass through the data that we need. We put in our train start date, train end date, our trade start date and trade end date. Um, and if you look at the different lengths of those, one is 23,000 and the other one is 5,600. Um, and then I just saved mine in Google here. I already have this set up, so I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to say no thanks. So it creates an error, but just know that what this is doing is it's putting the data in a uh, folder in my Google Drive, and we have it there for our next notebook, which will then call this data and, and use it for our actual training and testing. The big thing to remember here, guys, is how easy it is to process your data. You can call a lot of different symbols uh, using the Yahoo downloader. It's got a built-in feature engineer that will call the, indica the, the indicators with predictive power, and it will automatically calculate the turbulence and the VIX. And you can do that on your raw data. And then you do need to further process it by just making sure that you're sorting by the date and the symbol um, and that you're filling in any dates that are, you know, that have an NA, right, that aren't existent. And then it's easy to save, too, because you can just split that data up based on the dates that you've, you know, defined. And this part is optional. I just like to keep mine in a Google Drive because I like to use Google Colab. But if you have a computer, where you're willing to install this on, on your own local computer, it will create, um, you know, you'll just have to modify this to cr put into your own local computer path, right? And then it'll write the code or save the code as a CSV um, on that location that you've defined in your path. So um, hopefully you guys found this useful. The second part two to this video will probably come out next week at some point. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.